Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to an exhibition match. This is Shadow 33 casting a match between Cybernetic Pony and Sharadan. We are back on Virtual Plaza because apparently these two players cannot get enough of this map. Can't say I figure out why, but they seem to enjoy it. So, Sharadan going very quickly for his standard. When this is really what you have to do on this map. Vecchier opener for Depot. Very early Depot. Actually, where's the foundation? There should be a foundation here five seconds ago. He should go back to five seconds ago and make one. Cybernetic Pony going for a 2RP2 importer opener. I'm a bit surprised he's going for a third importer. I believe that's normally how he does it, actually. He is three importer, two RP. He doesn't have the money for... Okay, let me think about this for a second. 160... 260. No, actually, that makes sense. I guess he plans a... Okay, I guess it's 2RP2 Importer. And Cybernetic Pony getting a very quick start with his Special Ops attacking Sharadan's Scouting Forces, but both players are aware of what the other one's playing. And there is Sharadan's Depot, complete at the 55 second mark, and he will be starting to build a Zion Pulsar right away, I'm sure. No, he's not. He is going for... Interesting. He is going instead for direct moving out. I... Don't know why. The only way to efficiently get any vehicles in this map, or get them quickly enough, is to use infantry to make them, at least for the first one. So I'm rather surprised he hasn't gone and done that. I don't think he was short on cash at the time. He may very well have been, though. He is, however, patrolling, and that will stop anything that Cybernetic Pony sends. And Cybernetic Pony going for a very quick opening factory. That would explain why he wasn't bothering too much with too many importers, because he is not going primarily for infantry as he normally does. He is getting some, but. He is getting an early factory, probably early Lancers. Because in this map, he'd likely expect early Zion Pulsar Rush, and Lancers will basically counter that. However, Sharadan is not going for early vehicles. He's just leaving that depot up there. It looks like he might be just waiting for enough money. He doesn't have enough QP for right now. And when he does, he actually... Odd? Sorry, I'm saying it's odd. The... Resource display is showing as if he's spending his money, even though he isn't. So I I think he might be trying to build another Zion Veer for Zion Pulsar. But there is no no construction on the timeline, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is constructing a Lancer. He is definitely expecting something to come up, but I think Shardon may simply be trying to go for infantry. Not even bothering too much with vehicles, just keeping the depot there. That would make sense. That would make sense for Teth Veer. That wouldn't make sense for Zion Veer. But it doesn't matter though, Cybernetic Pony is coming in at the, at the 240 mark and the present Shardan at the 137 mark. He is apparently destroying one of the importers that Cybernetic Pony had, and Cybernetic Pony not dealing with that, so that I don't think will cause a problem. However, I believe that was the first importer. So Cybernetic Pony may... No, he's not. He's fine. We see that the importer is destroyed at this point in time, and there has been no... at the 3 minute mark. And the Lancer has been built regardless, so there's not... Oh, it is actually stopping one. Okay. That harassment was useful for Shardan. Shardan, however, the 148 mark, and jumping back slightly further behind, has now built a Zion Pulsar. Not using a Zion Veer, building it... He's hard building that Zion Pulsar. And on this map... Oh wait, no he's not, never mind, that did teleport and he's... He is building it the fast way. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, jumped back to the 106 mark to get rid of this Shin Veer before it destroys the Importer. Not at all surprising, and that Shin Veer probably should have attacked closer to the Implobo Pass to Edge. Granted, Shardan likely didn't know what was going to happen, but if he jumped back and moved it further, actually... Not sure that would work. Cybernetic Pony at the 350 mark Believes he's destroyed Shardan's base. Shardan likely getting that Zion Pulsar will hamper it. Not sure about stop it. Zion Pulsar, however, is up at the 121 mark, built from the Zion Veer. So Shardan will be able to defend himself pretty well, but he is moving forward instead. He is going to attack with that Zion Pulsar instead of going for defense with it. On this map, not at all surprising. In fact, he is dealing some damage to the factory. However, the factory was under construction at the time, it was able to heal that damage up. Now it is meaningful, and the Lancer coming up. The Lancer will be done. Oh, we can actually see the progress bar on this side. And Cybernetic Pony is about a minute up from there, so it's not much use. And from his point of view, Zion Pulsar is not doing a huge amount of damage. Another Zion Beer has been built to help deal with this, but it's not that great. The Teth Beer, not in position to get rid of the Lancer. It damaged the Lancer a bit, but not in position to destroy it. 
Sharon, however, from his point of view, the 249 mark is dealing quite a bit of damage to the factory and killing it before a Lancer comes out. Very nicely done. Cybernetic Pony will have to go back and deal with that, move his infantry back to get rid of that Zion Pulsar, and that's exactly what he's doing. He is getting a Marine up here. All he really needs to do is distract it long enough so that the factory is able to build the Lancer. Once the Lancer is built, it's fine, and the Lancer will be coming up. No problems here. That Zion Pulsar, not efficient enough. It is able to kill a couple of the infantry, but the Lancer will stop it, and that's what matters. The Lancer able to scare it away, and Zion Pulsar... No, won't get back in time. That Zion Beer is going down. Chardin at the 239 mark, however, is able to control it, getting one last move in and going to depot repair. There he goes, getting it into the depot, and that Teth Beer needs to go back around to the back here. But he's making a Teth Pulse with it instead. Interesting choice. Definitely tougher, but Teth Pulsers are not quite as effective against air as Teth Beer are. That being said, staying alive is what is really needed on this map. If a unit dies, that's a huge deal, just given how well, not so much how expensive they are, but given how little time players have, the smallest mistake, one unit death could mean the loss of the game, and getting that Teth Pulsar at least gives a bit more extra HP. That Teth Veer, of course, popping out when it dies means it's going to be able to stay around that much longer. It's going to be able to deal damage that much longer. And against the Lancer, the Teth Veer, as I mentioned, is the more powerful option. So if it pops out of the Teth Pulsar, that's still fine. The important thing is the infantry don't get rid of it in the process. Given that Zion Pulsar is able to defend against it pretty well, it's looking promising. That being said, at this point, all that's really happening is defense. From Cybernetic Pony's point of view, he's actually doing extremely well. Though Shardan really should just watch Shardan's point of view, because Shardan's the further back point of view. He has lost his Teth Pulsar, but his Teth Fear is still up, able to get rid of one of the Lancers. That Teth Fear needs to go back into the depot. Oh, no, Shardan does not have enough... Liquid Crystal, but he is able to get rid of the Lancer in time. That Teth, that Teth Veer needed to move back. That should not have died. Unfortunately, not enough Chrono Energy to save it. That is frustrating. Know that feeling. That is extremely frustrating when that happens. Shardon trying to just control as best he can with Chrono Energy as it recovers, but I don't think it'll recover in time. That is in the unplayable pass. That is gone. That Teth Veer is completely gone. He's going to need to build a new one, and he has. However... That is fine. He's actually done a great defense there. The Lancers are the real prize, however. It's... The fact that Cybernetic Pony has lost a lot of Q-Plasma on those Lancers for really only about 20 Q-Plasma from Shardon as a counter-investment. Lancers are 36 Q-Plasma each, so that was 72 Q-Plasma. And given that no more is being harvested for Cybernetic Pony at this point, that's a big cost. And ATHC is well coming up will be effective against the infantry, but like I said, at this point, Sharon has actually gotten a bit ahead just by making cost on his defense. Very effective use of depot repair. But I don't see this game any anytime soon. It looks like Sharon double checking to make sure sorry, yes, yeah, Sharon is one checking to make sure Cybernetic Pony is not expanding. Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, is clearly focused entirely on going for one big military push. And if Sharon keeps this up, another defense like the one he had well, it's hard to say. Another defense like the one he had will help, but he needs to build up a bit more. He needs to build up one extra resource processor, and that'll probably do the trick. Cybernetic Pony getting rid of the crates in the center to shorten the rush distance. Very good idea, but doesn't really matter. Further back, Shardin has set up an attack and is able to get rid of some of the infantry. The Teth Pulsar here is, however, not in here attacking the Lancer. It is attacking the infantry, and a lot is being lost here. Shardin losing his forces in the process. He's almost undoing the damage he did earlier. This Lancer taking some damage. Actually, the Teth... The Teth Pulsar not taking enough damage to really stop it in time before killing the Lancer. But that Teth Pulsar needs to move back. It's not going to be able to get rid of this ATC. Neither... Actually, the Teth Fear and the ATC will be basically even. I think they'll both die simultaneous. No! The ATC survives with two health left. The mech saving the day for the ATHC. Shardon jumping back about 30 seconds from there. Moving that Teth Fear back to base. He looks like he is getting another. He is getting another Zion Pulsar. He is not getting more resource processors at this point. That is fine. What I was saying before is if he's able to defend against it enough, if he could justify getting one more resource processor, that would pull him ahead. But he needs to be able to justify it. He needs to be able to make cost enough for these units. He needs to be able to kill enough of Cybernetic Pony's units without losing his own in order to justify that ADLC spending. At this point, he's breaking even. More or less. He is still a little bit ahead. Cybernetic Pony is 
not quite getting stuff working as efficiently as I'm sure he'd like, but actually building the mech is probably working against Cybernetic Pony. At this point, Sharon can easily get rid of these mechs, and he is getting rid of the factory. He's dealing quite a bit of damage to it. Cybernetic Pony, we are looking at his point of view about five seconds down at the eight minute mark, and this factory is going down at the Impalable Pass to Edge, but mechs and marines coming in here to counterattack on Sharon's base. I think Sharon's going to move back to try to deal with that. Now, that being said, Shardan does have the money. He could rebuild this if he wanted to. And really, it doesn't matter. I think he might just be going for the kill. Moving his Teth Pulsar back, possibly for defense, but... Shardan... Actually, it doesn't matter. Shardan made the right move. Cybernetic Pony is instead trying to defend. He is not going for an attack. He is not trying to get rid of Shardan's base. So Shardan predicted that properly. And Shardan, however, is five minutes up, and he is going for a defense of his own. But Cybernetic Pony is the one further in the past, so Shardan's attack is ultimately going to go through. This factory is ultimately going to go down. This Teth... No, it's not! There's... This Zion Pulsar needs to have his attack undone. It needs to have his movement undone. It just needs to keep attacking this. And it is not doing so! No, that Zion Pulsar is moving back. That is... That was so close. However, mechs are what is coming out. That is... Not working out for Cybernetic Pony. He's building mechs. I think he's expecting Shardan to go for air after winning that last engagement. Possibly might be trying to get a Macrofab, but I doubt it. Cyber Point is not getting... No, he's not trying to get a Macrofab. The most he might go for is a defense turret, but I think he's really just anticipating Shardan going for air and trying to prepare accordingly. Not a bad idea, however, also not correct. Really, those Lancers were the best thing he had. Those Lancers are the only thing that Shardan has a hard time dealing with. Everything on the ground, his Zion Pulsars are coming up and dealing more and more damage to... Now, Shardan, we're at this point of view of the 927 mark, but there's still a whole minute of playable pass behind this. I don't think this is going to be an issue. Shardan, however, willing to worry about this, Cybernetic Pony might jump back. He should jump back and try to get all these units into position to get rid of the Zion Pulsar. Why this isn't happening is beyond me. And the second Zion Pulsar is coming in, and it will easily turn the tide, even if Cybernetic Pony does push forward, he, but he needs to. He's not taking advantage of the playable pass. Now he's going back. At the 924 mark, he is jumping back. He is moving some of his units forward, but he doesn't have the current energy to do it. They are not hierarchied. He can't easily do this. Getting his mechs forward, not doing the trick, unfortunately. Dealing a bit of damage, however. They're still whittling down those Zion Pulsars. In fact, having used them was just barely enough. But even with that, Zion Veer doing quite a bit of damage and spotting for the Zion Pulsar to get rid of this factory. And that factory is down at the 1012 mark. And Cybernetic Pony throws in the towel. Shardan. Actually, interesting, has won despite moving his Zion Pulsar away and ultimately saving it. But Cybernetic Pony still surrenders, realizes he can't get out of this. And that is going to be the game once we actually see a surrender. Anytime now. I really am surprised that Lancers were stopped. I can understand that the Teth Pulsar was doing a fair amount of damage. Perhaps Cyber... I just don't understand why he went for mechs. I could see ATHCs instead, or just pushing infantry... Oh, never mind. Cybernetic Pony has rescinded his surrender. Not that it matters, though. He will likely surrender fairly soon anyway. A Lancer is coming up, but the factory will go down before... No! It... Will it go down? It'll just barely go down! Looks like there's about two seconds left in that build timer, but just barely down. That Lancer is out. No way that he can easily defend against this. Even the infantry wouldn't do a great job. The ATHC might have been the only chance. The Lancer... The one problem, as we saw before, is that Teth Veer is effective against it, and the Teth Pulsar, of course, as well. But even then, a couple Lancers is still a threat. And it's still kind of distracting when you have all these units in play, and the Lancers just dealing that much more damage. But really, CISO's got a lot of hard choices at this point. This stays in the game against Vector, especially having lost that first Lancer attack. A lot of tough choices. Now, on this map, one thing that could have been done, I... No, actually, I don't think he can go along this side. I think this, the battlements around here are not passable. I don't think they actually... They're part of the map. So never mind then. It looks like the map actually ends right here. The Lancer really didn't have much place they could go to harass. Although, it still has some chance of harassing slightly. But yeah, this is a really tough choice. For CISO, there aren't a lot of good options. There really aren't. Other than, if that early Lancer works, it works. But if Vekir manages to counter it properly using... Well, as we can see, using Tethvir and some Teth Pulsars as well, but primarily the Tethvir, 
it's not really that easy to get around. So, Cybernetic Pony throws in the towel. That was our first game for tonight. Stay tuned for another game, which will be on a slightly less micro-intensive map than this one.